Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host, Sri Ayer. After a gap of two weeks, Abhijit Ayer Doron Mitra is back with a new avatar, Cross Dressing Fatso. Evidently, that is the words that Mahua Maitra uses to describe Abhijit Ayer Mitra. So bring it on is all we say. We're going to have a lot of fun today. First, like this video. And if you have not subscribed to our channel, we're going to help you find a way to automatically subscribe to all our channels. We're going to demonstrate that in just one moment. So hang on to your hats here. Let's first welcome Abhijit Ayer Doron Mitra. Cross dressing facts. So Namaskar and welcome to P Guru's channel. Thank you very much. I feel so honored to be bestowed this title by Honorable Sushi Mahua Moitra Ji, the, uh, you know, the drudge of the liberals. She literally hovers above the liberal order like the Indian flag does above parliament. And I'm so honored to be given this major title. To me, it means more than even winning the Bharat Ratna. Thank you so much, Mahua Ji. Uh, you know, I mean, I, um, I, even when you're in jail, I will be deeply thankful to, to you for this title. Thank you so much. Well, uh, you know, one thing that people have to remember that if you're going to dish it out to the others, be prepared to get it back in spades. Not everyone is going to keep quiet. People will match you worse for worse, uh, epithet for epithet, expletive for expletive in a more colorful language. Mahua Maitra, did, does anybody talk to you about your height, for example? No. So why are you trying to dis body shame uh, Abhijit Ayer, my dear friend Abhijit Ayer Mitra, I may not agree with him on everything, but he's a very good friend of mine. We have differences, we have uh, you know similarities, and, and we love each other's company. So anyway, no, no, so this, this is... Was, this was an honorific. He was uh, bestowing a title upon me, because you see, she's extremely <laughs> liberal. I would never associate body shaming and homophobia. Uh, you know, I mean, this is a girl who has risen from... Uh, you know, being the daughter of a mere tea planter, going to a very ordinary school in Calcutta, uh, you know, Gokhale school. She didn't even go to the elite schools like La Martiniere or anything like that. And she went to a very ordinary run-of-the-mill college in America, uh, you know, called Mount Holyoke. And she's still risen to be member of parliament, even though she was barely making rent being vice president J.P. Morgan. I mean, if this isn't an inspirational story, I don't know what is. Thank you so much for those inspirational words. I'm sure she's going to draw inspiration from your word as she smells over her non-existing political future. I mean, some people cross the line without realizing that they have crossed it. Who knows? I might be proven wrong, but I think she's done politically. Anyway, let's move on. Um, viewers, we have a small way to make it easy for you to subscribe to all our channels in one click. We have done a lot of work and I would like us to show you, you have to go to our website, pgurus.com. And now if you scroll down, thank you, scroll down, you can see there is a function there called auto subscribe to YouTube. So what you do is click on all and then click on the YouTube icon. Go ahead, please. So when you click on that, it will automatically subscribe you to all the channels. One shot. You don't need to do it on each channel. So we are trying to make it easy for you. I hope you do respond to this by connecting or clicking on all and signing up for all channels. By the way, just because you're subscribing doesn't mean you get notification. You might say, well, I don't understand Tamil. I don't understand Hindi. Well, for that, you need to go and turn on the bell notification. Only then you will get the notification. So at least I would like to see all of you subscribe to our channel because in, in, in a short amount of time, we might only limit questions from our subscribers because we want you to be serious. We have too many people, you know, dissing us and we just don't have time for that. No time for negative energy. Let's jump in with questions for Abhijit. But before that, Abhijit, Maldives, what's your take on what's happening? Well, what's happened has had to happen, right? See, it's a good thing in a way because Moizu thought he could get away with being anti-India. But thanks to his own ministers now, his freedom of action is deeply curtailed, right? Number one. Number two, he's definitely not getting the bhav he expected to get in China, right? Uh, because uh, people don't realize this, but four months back, a Chinese tourist was gang-raped in Maldives. 
Uh, it's been big news on Weibo, which is the Chinese version of Twitter, Facebook, what have you. And uh, it's not gone down well in uh, uh, China at all because the person in question was not really arrested or charged or anything because he's a party worker and whatnot. Nonsense. So let's see what happens. But it's at any rate, it's severely restricted Moizu's freedom of action. Well, I didn't know that four four Chinese nationals were gang raped in in Maldives. That is serious, serious uh, incident. I mean, uh, that and, is and bad. you know, it doesn't it it doesn't go down well for their tourist reputation if you're yeah. gang raping visitors and not taking action against them because they're politically connected. Very true. Very true. Um, look, I I think the damage is now done. The cancellations have gone through the roof. And it's going to take a while for Maldives to come back and get the confidence back of India. In the meantime, Lakshadweep is being, uh, you know, projected. Andaman, I know, has been a very good place, destination for tourism. So is Srinagar. Um, Lakshadweep, I heard some paperwork is still required. Are you aware of that being easier, made easier now? Uh, not really. I, I don't know. I haven't uh, researched it. But when we went, uh, my mom and I, we went to Lakshadweep on the Tipu Sultan. Let me tell you what happened. Uh, that one boat was meant to be both a tourist boat and it was the only commuter boat to the mainland. There was a Tipu Sultan and one other boat, I think, but there were only two boats that would go there every week. Now, even that was used to bring food supplies to the people. So it was food, it was hospital, even medical evacuation required the boat and you had to be a tourist boat which would complete the entire tourist round before you got to a medical uh, uh, facility. Then, next thing that happened with all of this uh, was that uh, uh, we were meant to go from Kavarati to Kadmat, which are, let me show you this on a map. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, Right, so this is Kavrati Island. Yeah. And Kadmat is uh let me see. Okay, so this is Kadmat Island. Right. And you can see from Kadmat to Kavarati. Now, we were meant to sail from here to here and then to a place called Kalpeni, which is here. And finally, we would go to an island called Minikoi, which was down here. It was the furthest of the islands because then it became easy to come back to Trivandrum. So it used to be from Cochin, go like this and then come back like this. Now, what happened in this entire thing was on the second day before Kalpeni and everything, there was a death in Minikoi. So we had to go from Kavarati to Minikoi to pick up the uh, body. And imagine having a body on, knowing that there was a body on, we had to finish our holiday in Kadmat and Kalpeni before coming back. ऐसे आपने सुना है आईटी नजरी ऐसे कैसे टूरिज्म बढ़ेगा सो दिस इज़ द थिंग दैट यूज़ हैपन टुडे इट विल टेल यू बीफ इज़ एसेंशियल पार्ट ऑफ़ द मेन्यू बॉस दे डेंट इवन आर चिकन्स आउट देर इट ओनली यूज़ बी फिश एंड व्हाटेवर दे कुड गेट आउट देर एंड सडनली बीफ इज़ बिकम पार्ट ऑफ़ Okay, so Lakshadweep was destroyed uh, uh, in a sense there uh, uh, in this belief that its unique culture had to be preserved. Even though, you know, CGH, when they first set up the Bangaram Island Resort, I'm a big fan of CGH, by the way. How they won that contract was because they were the only one that talked about ecological sustainability. Oberoi put in a bid, uh, 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 Taj put in a bid, they were all rejected. Because CGH was the only one that showed that the way they set up the resort, if they are required to remove it 20 years down the line, the ecological impact of that removal will be zero and there will be nothing left behind on that island. Right. Uh, still nothing was done. 
even though you showed people that you can have a sustainable development model, nothing was done. You know, this is the classic Congress thing of keeping people poor and not developing. So uh, let luxury develop. I don't think it's in competition to the Maldives. It is just what it is. Thank you so much. And now let's jump into questions. Mr. Barani wants to know, what's your solution to fix engineering in India? What can realistically be done? You recommend higher studies in Western countries uh, for self-study improve or self-study improvement. What would help or is it hopeless? No, Babu. See, don't lose hope. The thing is, you know, <laughs> go through your engineering course. Do Learn it by rote. If you can go abroad, then do it. If not, learn it by rote, but then start having a problem-solving approach to yourself. Just think how the theory is being taught to you and the practicals are being taught to you. And what do I apply it into tangibly? So it becomes, you be the problem solver. Be aware that you are not being taught problem solving, but you're being given a set of tools which you can use to problem solve. And then you develop a problem solving approach. Very true. Very true. Uh, Francis wants to know, hi Abhijit, how do you think that the dwindling white population in Europe, Canada, USA, Australia will eventually lead massive ethnic unrest or civil war between people of different ethnicities? Well, it it will lead to social unrest. I don't know what, uh, what shape or form that social unrest will take, but it will take social unrest. Uh, this is inevitable. You know, but you tell me, why is a white man settling down in America, colonialism, but multiculturalism in Europe, inviting in people who are not native to that place, not colonialism? How is that migration? They are also take, coming, they are also generating opposition. People in uh, those countries don't want them out there. The governments who want them, but the people don't. So still, so how is that not colonization? I can actually make a case that uh, uh, illegal immigrants are colonizing Europe today. Right. But it is, it, look, this is, this is heading up to some kind of a systems collapse. I don't know what, but something has to give. And I don't know what, what will give. I don't know what is the straw that will break the camel's back. Next one. Aditya wants to know, you quote often that lemon remark that every idea is worth a thousand words. Isn't this how? What happened? Hang on. Uh, I think we got out of sequence. Okay. Isn't this how books or papers are written? E ever come across anything modern that is more meat and less bones? Uh, yes. Uh, that is how uh, books and papers are written. But the issue is the leftist will find a hundred different research subjects out of thin air where there's nothing to be researched and create a volume of literature that fits their own narrative, as opposed to serious scholarship, which is going and actually finding a real problem and solving it. OK, uh, this is the problem. They saturate everything, and they'll connect everything with their pet ideas. And so if you rather search for, say, female empowerment, you will get a 1,000 papers by the left, which will deal with 100 different uh, female empowerment in uh, weekend farmers' markets or female empowerment through the uh, 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 Garbha dance festival in Gujarat. These are not really problems. Okay. Uh, and there'll be one paper from a right-wing person on actual female empowerment, which will actually be a serious paper. Maybe there'll even be two, three serious right-wing, uh, left-wing papers. But the remaining 997 will all be jargonistic trash that's developed to saturate you so that you never get to the meat. Shaping opinion through media, especially left-leaning opinion, is not very expensive. Unfortunately, the right wing hasn't realized this yet. That's where the problem is. And they drown you with mediocrity. Unfortunately, the one outstanding article doesn't get a chance to rise above the noise. Yeah. Next one. Thank you, Pasvik Vritti, for becoming a YouTube member. Malibam Bhattacharya wants to know, since you have good knowledge about USSR, is it true that Soviets use a large amount of nuclear materials in their weapons as compared to the USA? If yes, what was the reason behind that? 
No, that's not true. The amounts required for a, a fission or fusion are very similar. Uh, it depends on the efficiency of the design. Look, there's basic designs, right, which all work the same way. It depends on the purity of the isotope and your uh, 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 what's it, uh, uh, enrichment process. There's the gun type assembly. There's the implosion uh, thing. There is the two-stage uh, thing for hydrogen bombs, which is to say a fusion and things like that, where first you have a primary fission, which then ignites fusion. It doesn't actually... It, it's very design dependent these things next one please and just, uh, 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 yeah. they were very, the soviets made very efficient bombs yeah uh, vamsi wants to know question to both who will win andhra pradesh is it tdp or jagan what are your sources saying my sources are saying nothing sorry no, actually, this uh, question, just... yeah, actually, this question would have not even been asked if it were not for the stunning defeat of KCR in Telangana. Now people are beginning mm. to doubt if Jagan Mohan will suffer a similar fate. And I think we'll have to wait and see that there was so much resentment against KCR did not become evident until the pollings, I mean, the election hearing started hitting fever high pitch. So we have to wait and see if there is going to be something similar against Jagan Reddy. We'll wait and see. I'm still not seeing anything particular against Jagan, by the way. Huh? Hmm. Next one, please. Kanda Batata wants to know, why aren't 737 MAX grounded in India after Alaska Airlines incident? Possibly because Boeing has not issued a, uh, a global advisory right now. Uh, neither has the FAA, as far as I'm concerned. Boeing, I read something a few hours back that Boeing has accepted that it's their mistake. But till the FAA and Boeing announce and uh, put an advisory out, uh, India will not ground it proactively. I think it's also the latest generation of aircraft, not like... Yeah, but it was, you know what happened with it, right? Like uh, 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 Boeing admitted oh. they're under criminal investigation for screwing up the design and cutting costs and things like that and mm. screwing around with the design. So latest or not, it's a deeply troubled thing. I think in many ways, the 737 MAX has destroyed Boeing. Mm. Next one. Abhishek wants to know, why do only three, third world countries contribute to UN peacekeeping mission, but first world countries don't? It's a very lucrative money uh, machine for third world countries. And you notice the richer that India has become the less we contribute to UN peacekeeping. When we were poor, we used, we used to contribute a lot to UN peacekeeping because you used to get UN salaries. The troops used to get UN salaries and it was a very lucrative post. But when you get richer, you're not interested in dying in other people's wars. I also heard that they have not paid India for some back wages. I'm not aware of that. Yeah, yeah. Next one, please. Akash Mihir 84 wants to know what Priyanka is saying about what is going on inside SSUBT camp. Eh? Which Priyanka? Which Priyanka? Chaturvedi or uh, Vadra? Akash I Mihir, can you explain? You know? uh, I think so. I think so. She's now latest. I... She's in. Uh, she's in Shiv Sena, right? Yeah, she's in. No, she's in UBT. She's in SSUBT. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's a stupidity. Right, right, right. What? She's my friend. If she tells me something, I'm not going to tell you without permission, yo. <laughs> Next one, please. Thank you, Nandish CS. Question for both. Help on books or reference material for taking care of the kid. How to raise kids here in United States? You're asking a single gay man on reference material on how to take care of kids. Sorry, Nandish, well, wrong question, wrong person. When we used to be growing, uh, when you used to have small children, we used to, you know, uh, watch, have them watch TV. Barney was one, and then Mr. Uh, Roy, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood was a beautiful show. There are lots of kid-friendly shows where they show you how to understand small things and things like that. Uh, U.S. has a fairly amount, you know, you can, you can use the uh, television to babysit, but not only that, you have a lot of colorful illustrated books. Just avoid all this uh, 
woke uh, critical race theory literature that's not good yeah next one Ishan Sharma wants to know, Abhijit, what do you see the future of Soren, Kejriwal, Mamta's ministers and their political party, especially how they have made a joke of ED summons? When is this dotted alliance going to break officially? Look, uh, as what I'm hearing on the grapevine is that Soren and Kejriwal are going to jail sometime this month. Mamta's minister, they're taking it very, very seriously. Uh, it hasn't gone down well at all. There is going to be serious action. You wait and watch. You wait and watch. Uh, I don't know when, but this fellow is going to regret it. Next one, please. Naive Nerd, thank you so much for becoming a YouTube member. Thank you, Sandeep. Did French pedophiles really create gender studies out of air that even Neil Tyson also believes? Yes. They were called the 66. They were the 66 great perverts of the Sorbonne and uh, something soissant. I forget the French term for 66. Uh, but uh, they were complete little perverts. Foucault was an outright child molester. And they intellectualized their predatory, their sexual predatory behavior. And created a whole veneer. The same way, for example, Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi would create a whole uh, narrative around himself of renunciation and what not to justify, you know, lying between his nieces naked. These people were even worse because they actually sexually molested children. Right? It wasn't passive. It was active. It was child rape that Foucault and people did. And they normalized it and justified it, developing all this uh, nonsense. This should have been dealt with then and there. It was not. Remember, people like uh, uh, Woody Allen and Co were wanted for child rape. Foucault was wanted for child rape. They escaped to America. In America, you know, it's just like, oh, a fine French man who speaks with an accent. They don't really listen to other people, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, they didn't realize what was happening. Next one, please. Mr. Lee wants to know, what do you think about BJP announcing a nationwide rooftop solar net metering scheme? Wouldn't this be a killer freebie that actually helps nation's energy security? I have not heard about this, so Mr. Lee. So thank you for telling me about it. I support it 100%. I think all roofs in India should be covered with solar. And whoever owns the roof or if it is joint ownership of the roof, the benefits should be offset against uh, 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 the uh, electricity consumption. I think it's a fantastic idea. I think it needs to be incorporated into fact. You've started seeing glass balconies in India, which honestly are very stupid because, you know, glass uh, amplifies the heat, uh, you know. So uh, it, instead of glass, if you put solar panels out there, you'd have even bigger collectors in large buildings and things like that, I think. Solar is a fantastic idea to go, except we import too much of our solar. We need to develop a local solar industry. Next one, please. Thank you, Kapish Verma. How to become an expert on a region, example, Middle East? Read a lot first, then travel. The travel will destroy almost 90% of the preconceived notions that the reading has given you. Then talk to people who make sense to you based on your travels, not based on your readings. The, the readings that you see that still hold the test after you travel to that place, and please don't go in tour groups. Be adventurous and go by yourself to those places and mix around with the people, live there for a while. Talk to people, you know, mingle. Uh, the people who survive, survive. The, the reading that survives your primary uh, test. Associate with these people, uh, become interns with those people, and then uh, you will you yourself will develop a filter for who is giving you accurate information out of uh, the subdivisions of that region. You know, yeah, uh, Indians are very considered very friendly wherever they go as tourists, and people will strike up conversations with you. They're always curious. I'll give you an incident. I was in Brazil, uh, 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 Abhijit, on the Atlantic coast. 
The interesting thing is, this is a tip of a, like a cake. On one side, the waters are cold because they are coming from the South Pole. On the other side, the waters are warm because they are coming from the equator. So uh, this is a French settled colony. And, and there, it's a mix of all sorts of languages. You have Portuguese, you have Spanish, you have French, very little English. You, you have to actually have some passing knowledge of one of these three languages in order to get by. But the interesting thing I noticed, there are lots of Indian names. There was a Ganesha video store, video rental. It, it had a nice Ganesha picture in the front, and, and it's just, just a video video rental. And, and they knew immediately when we said that we are Indian vegetarian, what we like and what we don't like. It was it yeah. was very very pleasant experience. Yeah, so, I think everywhere that you go, you'll generally, especially the Middle East, people really like Indian. Huh? Central Asia, Middle East, uh, even Africa, uh, they like Indian. South America, they like Indian. Uh, Italy, they judge you a bit on class, but they really like Indian. Uh, you will get the occasional racist here and there in Europe, sure, but nobody has a bad opinion of Indians per se. Very true, very true. Excellent. Next one. Bharat Konda wants to know, uh, in future, 20, 30 years down the line, how much will the middle class retired people be paying for health and old age care? I don't know. But... Uh, the cost of healthcare is going to keep it. Think of it as a car. The longer you keep a car, the more expensive its maintenance becomes. A human being exactly like that. Our body is meant to last for something like about 29 to 32 years. We've already overextended that to a life expectancy of about 75 to 80. Okay. Uh, in the olden days, there was maybe one exception to the rule who was Ramesses II who lived up to 91 or 92 years of age. But generally, life expectancy till very recently was about 32 to 34 years of age maximum and the best of times. Normally, it was about 29 to 32. Less during the Stone Ages, slightly more during the Bronze Age, slightly more during the Iron Age, but that's what it was. Now, you want to maintain yourself at three times that age, boss. How much do you think it's going to uh, 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 cost you? It doesn't progress like this, you know. It progresses like this. It, it starts with arithmetic progression of cost and becomes geometric progression of cost. Next question, please. Saurabh Jain wants to know, do we have any historical record? When did we start using oils and ghees in food? No, we don't. Uh, we actually don't. This is something I've tried searching. What is the earliest known uh, record of uh, using fat? in food it's impossible to tell because we don't know when the first uh, pot was made uh, pots developed simultaneously all across the world and the first form of frying would have developed when the animal fat put into it had rendered out the water had evaporated and something started cooking in fat uh, it wouldn't have been vegetable oil. It wouldn't have been ghee. These came later. Animal fat lard would have been the first uh, 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 fat cooking ingredient. And even that we still can't pinpoint. Next one, please. Sandeep K, thank you so much. Is Epstein Island another Hunter Biden kind of cover up? Are the names real? Well, the names that have been exposed are real. What I'm interested in is the names that were redacted because those lists have redacted names. And I want to know who the hell is those redacted names. Only three or four, right? Yeah, but who are they? Why is it redacted? One of them has said that if her name is revealed, then her religion will kill her. And she is closely associated with Hillary Clinton. You can connect the dots. Yeah. Next one. I didn't know that, but I think we all know who it is, but yeah. Naive Nerd wants to know, what do you think of the new DRDO reforms? I've heard that past two years, the government has increased the foreign service intake by three years. True or not? No, not true. Uh, they have not uh, increased the foreign service intake. Uh, uh, it's, it's a very simple thing. You see, if you increase the foreign service intake, anybody who joins this, right now, if you're if you write the UPSC exam, 
you are guaranteed to become joint secretary and ambassador. Okay, unless there is some very serious misdemeanor on your part and you spend uh, time suspended and all of that, you will make joint secretary at the very least. Perform, don't perform, doesn't matter. You will make ambassador at the very least. That is something they are not getting rid of. Okay, uh, so no, it has not increased. They are now trying to fudge the figures and show you that all the second tier and third tier officers out there who are not technically IFS are being, uh, they are now not breaking down the category of first tier, second tier, third tier apparently. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what DRDO reforms you're talking about. Thank you. Thank you, Keval Desai, for becoming a YouTube member. Mitra Mela wants to know, have you gone, have you been to Agati, possibly the greatest coral atolls in the world, stunning and with direct flights from Kochi? No, I have not. Uh, I should probably go. Uh, maybe somebody could tell me what the uh, infrastructure is like, because when I go to islands, I like for there to be scuba diving available immediately. And I only go to luxury islands, you see, I don't go to Altafaltu islands. <laughs> Next one. By the way, I, I completely, I just wanted to say, I completely oppose this boycott Maldives thing. And if any of you, especially the government of Maldives is watching, if you provide me with five free nights either at the Western, uh, not the Western, sorry, the St. Regis or the Ritz-Carlton in an over-the-sea bungalow with its own infinity plunge pool and at least three bottles of champagne a day as well as caviar and foie gras, I'm happy to become the face of, uh, I'm happy to sacrifice myself and risk the hate of my countrymen and become the face of uh, uh, tourism Maldives. <laughs> Come to Maldives! <laughs> Chaitanya YSK, thank you so much. Just like how Turkey specialized in drone technology and what military tech did UK and Israel with small budget specialize in. Uh, <laughs> look, these trajectories are all very different, right? Israel started, they decided very, very long back that they would only specialize in subsystems and systems integration. Uh, maybe the only thing they, they did try, they tried to make the Lavi, which was their own fighter, which is the basis of the J-10 fighter that the uh, 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 Chinese used. Uh, but they didn't go ahead with it. They just decided it wasn't worth their time economically. They did make a tank. But remember, the engine is an imported engine. The gun is a locally produced variant of the German gun. Right. So <clears throat> they were very careful. The UK used to produce everything, but the UK deindustrialized. Never forget that. They tried to produce everything even when it was economically uh, not feasible. And then Margaret Thatcher decided to take them down the, ro the road of mercantilism again and not manufacturing. France persisted with manufacturing. Britain shut down manufacturing mostly. Uh, and so they now focus on very specific components. And it suits them. You see, it suits their economic reality because they can plug into any market that they want. They all purchase from a single unified European market, Israel and the UK. Nobody will deny Israel technology or things because they know it will be safeguarded. Uh, their operational security is very tight. Their industrial security is very tight. Uh, their IT protections are very good. And they know how to negotiate and talk. Turkey did something different. Uh, Turkish technology is still not as good as Israeli technology, no matter what you see. Please don't go by external appearance. It is still nowhere near uh, 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 say German or French or uh, Israeli technology. Is it good? Yes. Is it, uh, is it the best? No. And Turkey spread its thing. Remember, Turkey is a fairly big country. Uh, so kind of like France, which can invest a bit in everything, they kind of followed the French model, but not a state supported model, though there was a huge amount of state support. Because even private companies are here private companies are treated like stepchildren. Their private companies are treated like your own children. Of course, it's a very corrupt, nepotistic system. But they've always done that. Before, it used to be state-owned. Uh, and it used to assemble very rudimentary stuff, like the M113 uh, personnel carrier and things. 
uh, the F-16s, uh, etc., but they did not get the technology to manufacture the engine. Next one, please. Bharati in Bharatam wants to know the temple architecture between south and north are different. Is this because of the constant destruction in the north and the Gopuram that were rebuilt didn't get the luxury of time to bear arts? No, it's just that different regional styles develop based on uh, how things look. So, for example, you take the Konark temple and the Jagannath temple. Uh, the Konark temple looks a lot like the Jagannath temple, even though it is much uh, older. The Ratha on top is meant to be there for both, right? South Indian temples also change. Remember the Tanjore temple where the uh, uh, Gopuram is on top of the Sanctum Sanctorum is different from the Madurai Meenakshi temple where the Gopurams are on the gates and the Sanctum Sanctorum does not have that, is not the tallest of the Gopurams, right? So there's a lot of variation even within Southern temple architecture. Kerala temples, for example, are very different from uh, Tamil or Andhra temples. Uh, and even within the Hoishala architecture itself, <coughs> uh, within uh, a Pallava architecture, you will see variation. Within Chola architecture, you will see variation. Within Pandya architecture, you will see variation. Within Hoishala architecture, you will see huge variation. It had nothing to do with the destruction. You see, regional styles develop differently. So there are three broad uh, architectures, uh, Bharati and Bharatam. One is called Mitra, which is what you find in Kerala, where if you look at the thing, it is like a square base on which the, the things will have like a pyramid-like structure. The other thing is Dravida architecture, which is the Gopurams that uh, uh, Abhijit alluded to. The third one is called Nagara architecture, where what you are seeing now in Ram Mandir or many temples in the north. But all of them have very similar characteristics in that the Murti is lying down, looking up. And the place where the Murti looks up, that is called Vimana in Dravida architecture. It's called Shikara in Nagara architecture. I don't know what it is called in Mitra, but that concept does not change. That the, the Murti, the deity is lying down, looking up. That is very well known. That is why when we enter at the Dvajastamba, we usually you know touch it and uh, because it is essentially the feet of the, of the deity. Next one. <clears throat> Mr. Lee wants to know, why is Maldives so sexist? Their capitals are called Male. Male. Male, yeah. Very sad. <laughs> Next. Next one, please. Thank you, Pratsu12. You've been on a donation spree today. Much appreciated. Push Jindal, thank you so much. Abhijit, do you think mix can be transformed to drones? Yeah, uh, a lot of your old fighters can be transformed to drones. The question is, why would you want to? It's insanely expensive to maintain and fly them. Uh, but think of it this way. A brand new propeller-driven drone uh, is much more electronically sensitive than one of them costs a fraction of what it costs to keep a MIG up in the air, requires far less maintenance, uh, can target things much more precisely. Why would you want to convert MIGs into drones? Next one, please. Levi Ackerman, thank you so much. What is the origin of Islam and why Islam hate Jew? First, this is go look up origins of Islam on Wikipedia. Levi, don't ask me questions that you can find on Wikipedia. I would recommend you first go see Wikipedia and then go check out this YouTube channel called Sira International, C-I-R-A. It's run by Christian fundamentalists who are out to prove that Muslims when Muslims, they were actually Christians or Jews, depending on uh, which program of the day you watch. Uh, they hate Jews now. They didn't hate them before, by the way. They hated everybody who wasn't Muslim before. But uh, uh, this Jew hate is something very new. The original Jew hate was always Christians because they accused the Jews of killing their God, Jesus. Okay. Uh, uh, Muslims did not like anybody other than Muslims. Let's be clear about that. So it wasn't, uh, they were very equal opportunity in their hatred for everybody else. Next one, please. Ashish Sharma wants to know, should Dalit Pujaris lose their caste-based reservation 
because a pujari is by definition a brahmin and can't be a lower caste person no no uh, because a dalit pujari is uh, a, a pujari is not necessarily a brahmin you need to go to tamil nadu there are lots of uh, 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 tantric and shaktic uh, shakta rituals that require blood and sacrifice and things like that which brahmins cannot do, which are frowned upon by uh, uh, the agama shastra so no you can't equate the two next one please thank you sai hi abhijit will marijuana be legalized in india in the future it's already legal it's already legal uh, for medical uses it's already legal next one please well, these are people who have suffering from things like terminal diseases like say, cancer where the pain is so unbearable that marijuana yeah. helps you alleviate that well uh, not marijuana by itself but cbd uh, cbd extract mm. from the marijuana uh, there are already companies working on it uh, the thing is government has legalized it there's apparently lots of uh, minor hitches here and there you know what happens in this country you know, the police come in harakki uh, they're like uh, drugs kar rahe ho dikhao this and that etc etc so that's what's been happening keval desai wants to know big fan of you abhijit what would be the road map to make career in foreign relations right now i'm studying history because i heard that understanding history is important for geopolitics uh i don't know it depends on what you want to do do you want to go join the foreign service uh do you want to join a think tank uh in which case there are several ways of doing it which is you uh uh you know uh, uh maybe start teaching at university after you finish or you join a think uh, join a think tank immediately after you finish uh you go abroad and join a think tank after you finished uh it it really you don't really need to know history but uh it's preferable if you know history i know a lot of people who are very successful who are completely clueless about history there's also a part called futuristics in foreign relations which is looking which is backward uh, uh, uh extrapolating from what the, what the future you want to uh, uh look like sids thank you so much chances of trump vivek ramaswamy nikki haley ron desantis versus michelle obama i honestly don't know but i think michelle obama is going to get a lot of hate if she jumps in irrespective i think the democrats are going to win the next elections because they've just rigged the system so comprehensively finally I, some words of truth i think the bangladesh elections last week are going to be more free and fair than the american elections are going to be in december of this year have you read my book who painted my state purple abhijit not yet okay uh, did i send it to you No. It's about American read, elections, 2020. I've read, I've read red and white. Okay, your yeah, red and white means you are ready to fight. All right, Ashwin, thank you so much. Uh, NI languages uh, uh, have ka ka, North Indian languages ka ka ga ga. South Indian languages have ka ka ga ga. When basic unit alphabets are the same, why is it called Aryan and Dravidian languages? Aryan and Dravidian is determined by uh, the linguistic classification is not determined by the vocabulary; it's determined by the grammar, right? Uh, I don't know the intricacies of it because I can tell you honestly that Tamil, at least Brahminical Tamil that we speak at home, is heavily Sanskritized. Okay, but it is not based on vocabulary. If it was based on vocabulary, then uh, then English would be a Romance language. It is not counted as a Romance language. It is counted as a Germanic language because it is based on vocab uh, on uh, 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 grammar. Next one, please. Jose Xavier, thank you so much. Next one. Audrey Trushki, Ayer Mitra, <laughs> thank you. News on Owen Benjamin trolling India. excellent why are you getting riled up boss tell me do you think mukesh ambani gets riled up when the beggar out, sitting outside his house calls him names no na 
what is it with you people getting riled up for what Maldives one minister says? Maldives is smaller than South Delhi. Have you ever seen America react to anything this way? No, no. So why do you react this way? Let him troll. Tumhara kya jata hai? Karne do. And you're Next making one. him more popular, by the way. He's actually thriving off. He's got thousands of new followers since I last checked. Next one, please. <coughs> Just like the name. Who made Audrey Trashki? It is the right wing that took offense to all that she said that turned her into a celebrity. Who turned Rana Yub into a celebrity? Next one. Thank you, Ritwik. Uh, did ancient Indians have cartography? Both reply. Yes, yes they did. did. Uh, a very advanced cartography, as we know, because, uh, you know, there was this thing about both. I suggest you read Sanjeev Sanyal's book on this. Because he talks a lot, not just about the cartography, but also the shipbuilding culture. So, you know, we had a very ship, different shipbuilding culture that was tied together rather than hammered together. Because if you notice, it is easier for absorbing shocks than a hammered together hard frame boat. Uh, and this is the reason, you know, you have rubber dinghies. Rubber dinghies are... easier than uh, uh, wooden dinghies to manage. They're less fragile. It's called RHIB, Rigid Hull Inflatable Boat. Technically, we pioneered this kind of stuff. You know, there are there are stories about Vasco da Gama coming to Zanzibar and then running into an Indian merchant ship, which is like 10 times the size of what his More. ships were. More, uh, you have uh, uh, apparently early Tamil and Malayalam inscriptions in uh, 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 Angola and Mozambique, which means they crossed the Cape of Good Hope before the Portuguese crossed the Cape of Good Hope. <coughs> Next one, please. Thank you, Sids. What do you think both about Paul Prasad, where a Devi deity answers? Questions by dropping leaves in South and West India. Never done it. Yeah, I don't know about it. Sorry. Mandar Karnik, how is that? How is the nation running? If it accepts Jesus, it will run. If it does not accept Jesus, it is condemned to the fires of hell. Mutta is not listening anymore to Patai. What to do? Uh. Next one. Pulkit, thank you so much. Do we have records of caste-based rebellion in ancient or medieval India? Yeah, apparently there was one in Bengal, Odisha and things. I forget the name of it. But it was there. <coughs> I forget the name of the rebellion, but it was quite nasty. It was quite long. It was a multi-year rebellion. Yes, there is. Next one, please. Thanks, Jose Xavier. What is the North-South divide in Italy? Is the income disparity between North and South or are there other reasons? There's lots of reasons, historical as well. First of all, remember what you call Italy. It's not that everybody speaks Italian. They've started speaking Italian since the 1960s. But before the 1960s, they used to be extremely diverse languages. Okay, uh, Neapolitan is very different from Tuscan. Uh, 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 the uh, Apulian dialect and the Calabrian dialect were very different from the Neapolitan dialect, which is very different from uh, uh, Sard Sardinian is a completely different language, by the way, uh, uh, etc, etc. Uh, so what used to happen was, uh, after the Risorgimento and unification, uh, we need to remember the North had been devastated by the Napoleonic Wars first and the Austrian Wars. Okay, <clears throat> the north was effectively a colony of Austria. The south was actually very rich. It was the kingdom of the two Sicilies. Okay, uh, and what happened with the south was that it, well, because there hadn't been war there for quite some time. So what had happened was you had massive agricultural surpluses, which the north had none of. So when the unification and freedom of Italy happened, all the southern agricultural surpluses get transferred to the north. The north doesn't use it for agriculture. They use it for industrialization. And then they become rich. 
Okay. Now, what has happened since then as a process of industrialization combining with this uh, an industrial conformist north and a non-industrial non-conformist south, which used to be the rich part, which funded the wealth of the north, the South developed a significant mafia because of the free trade, but the restrictions, they didn't want industry coming South and disrupting their protection rackets and things like that. The chap who actually got rid of all of that as a precursor to industrializing the South was, guess who? Surprise, surprise, Mussolini. And who brought the mafia back into South Italy? The Americans. Because the mafia promised to help them in the invasion of Italy in the Second World War. Right. So the Americans brought it back. And once the mafia gained control, obviously they had zero interest in industrialization and they kept it deindustrialized because that's what suited their business model. So Mussolini, whatever bad you want to say about him, he did decriminalize the south of Italy. He did try to defeudalize it as well. Uh, and the guys who screwed him over were the Americans. Next one, and please. That is, that is the persistent thing. The North-South divide is an industrial divide, industrial versus uh, 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 non-industrial divide, which has been exacerbated by history. Next one, please. <clears throat> Capsule 12, thank you so much. How to remove caste language politics dictating state agendas versus development? We celebrate mediocrity versus meritocracy. Paying a heavy price with 1.4 billion bad city, any hope? You can't, because in a democracy, anybody can raise any topic, right? Uh, the way you overcome it is you develop, you, you deliver such focused development that people don't have time to go out. And that is a product of your regulatory mechanisms and your labor laws. You give the employer the ability to hire and fire, and you remove all the regulatory and compliance burdens on industry where industrialization boomed, <coughs> people, why are people worried about caste and language today? They've got too much free time in their hands. There is no office job, services job, I'm sorry, they do not do much work. It's not an easy life, but it's not backbreaking work the way an agriculturalist does it. You tell me how many farmers who actually do backbreaking work uh, or factory floor workers who actually do hard work have time for caste and language politics. They don't. It's a lot of your services thing and uh, marginally unemployed, partially unemployed, hidden unemployed people, of which there are a lot in this country who do all of this crap. Next, Next one, please. Thank you, Kiran Kumar. What about railways network that connects from India to Middle East to Europe? Why? It's not, it's not a the, he's talking about IMS, IMEC. It's more like a point to point. Uh, yeah, it's, it, it, yeah. It, it, yeah, but it does, it's not going to include Pakistan. India never agreed to anything that includes Pakistan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next one, please. Audrey Trashki Ayer Mitra, thank you. Child and uh, or CHD and Varanasi installing uh, Chandigarh. solar uh, Chandigarh and Varanasi installing solar rooftops. Your thoughts. I think you already said it's a great idea, right? Yeah, yeah, we've discussed this. Next one, please. Thank you, Chaitanya YSK. Why don't leaders like Putin, Xi, or Kim just declare themselves Tsar or Emperor? Why do they stick with the supreme title? Uh, because these days, if you declare yourself Tsar or Emperor, they would be considered slightly mad. That's why. <laughs> uh, there one. are people who have done it, by the way. There was uh, a General Bokasa in the Central African Republic who declared himself Emperor Bokasa. Uh, there was Idi Amin who declared himself the King of the Scots. Uh, and uh, there have been one or two of these nut job African dictators who declared themselves Emperor or King. And it didn't go so well for them. So generally, if you declare yourself King in this day and age, you're considered to be something of a mental case which doesn't actually help your case next one please levi ackerman thank you i mean i mean the prophet muhammad's ancestry before his birth which can't be found in wikipedia wikipedia uh 
we don't really know because uh, nobody maintained those ancestral records if they were they were written down in uh, this thing see there it was your ancestry didn't matter as much as your tribal loyalty because the tribes operated as clans and guilds and things like that right so it wasn't as important for them in britain you actually have land registries that go back thousands of years well at least a thousand years <clears throat> in europe you still do and they've been very meticulously maintained in arabia they did not first of all writing material was insanely expensive it had to be written on leather and you couldn't maintain records like that so you know there were all kinds of issues about ancestry and that is why it uh, out there it was based on the tribes that you descended from and the tribal loyalty etc etc family loyalty in that sense next one please thank you naive nerd is the chinese news about faulty weapons a psyop could we expect something before 2024 elections i don't know i honestly don't know i am not comfortable about what they're doing in tibet right now uh but if it was psyop so many people would have not been removed from their jobs and uh let me read i'll read the vijayaraghavan committee report let me make a note of it here uh <coughs> next one please i have been following the news for the last few days when did this come out i think it yesterday, yesterday or today it's a very very new okay. news yeah tick tick okay i haven't read it then uh yeah okay next one Glad please i'm pleasantly surprised Srinivas Vitala wants to know: Will India send a task force to support Guyana if Venezuela invades? Boy, see, India to Guyana ship route. How much time does it take? Do you know? Four, five, ten days. Boss, close to a month. If you want to first assemble a task force, the assemblage of the task force alone for a sixteen to twenty thousand kilometer sea voyage is insane. it'll take a month to assemble it and it'll take a month to sail all the way there if you want to save fuel and then how will you refuel out there because america will not let you project power in their neighborhood even though they say the monroe doctrine doesn't apply it still does very much apply by the way huh? not openly but it does apply which means only america can interfere in the western hemisphere no other country gets the right to do that so uh, uh, rest assured america will protect guyana they don't need india yeah. to do squat uh next question please thank you so much oh i think i think we are done thank you so much uh, abhijit for a change we actually went through all our questions and welcome back i'm hoping that we'll have a continuous session with you and uh we are, we are going to have a surprise up uh, uh, your sleep we're going to come up with something new that uh, abhijit and i are working on abhijit if you could just stay back after the program is 2 minutes yes yes Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much and viewers again like share and subscribe to our channel make use of the auto subscribe button go to pgurus.com scroll down look at auto subscribe click on all and click on the youtube icon and you will be subscribed to all our channel <coughs> in just one click thank you once again abhijit namaskar